Hi. A couple of months ago, we posted a video on extreme magnets. Basically, we went through the principles behind strong permanent magnets and we constructed a large magnetic assembly. We have use for strong magnetic fields around the lab and I have constructed a number of magnetic assemblies. And I prefer the permanent magnet type because they are more convenient, they don't have a power supply, and because they're very stable, there's no electronic noise introduced by the power supply. Now if you look at a moderate strength magnet, this is one of the neodymium iron boron magnets rated at N42. You can see that when I put a probe on the surface of the magnet, you'll get a field strength of about 250 tes millitesla, or one quarter of a tesla. You'll also note on the meter that as I raise the probe even a little bit, a couple of millimeters from the surface, the field strength decreases very rapidly. The reason for that is because the field lines from the surface of this magnet are being pulled around to the opposite pole. And so as you move away from the surface of the magnet, that fusion or pulling away of the field lines causes the field strength to decrease very rapidly. Now there is a trick that you can use to increase the field strength, which is called a gap magnet. Essentially identical to the magnet that I just showed you, but in this particular magnet we have two magnets north and south facing each other so they want to come together but we hold them apart with a little aluminum spacer so that we form a gap. Now if you look at the field strength in this magnet you can see that the field strength is almost twice as high almost 500 millitesla or half a tesla and it's much more homogeneous as I move the probe back and forth you can see that it doesn't change very much as I do this and that's very convenient for a lot of research that we're doing. Now the reason for that is because the two magnets act to isolate or insulate the effects of that dispersing magnetic field coming from the opposite poles and pulling the field lines away from the gap. If you want to create an even stronger magnet, you can use more powerful magnetic materials. Over here, I have a larger gap magnet that was fabricated for a video that we recently filmed on refrigeration. In this case, I'm using N52 magnets. And if you look, and I show you the strength, you can see that down on the surface of this stronger magnet, we have a field of about a half a tesla. And you can see that the field strength tends to decrease more slowly as I pull the probe away. Two reasons for that. One is it's a stronger magnet, but the other reason is because the magnet's dimensions are larger, that dispersion or spreading of the field lines happens more gradually. So we have a more homogeneous magnetic field within a short distance. In addition, if I place the probe into the gap, you can see that once again the field, line, the field strength increases in the gap between the two magnets. Now it's at about three quarters of a tesla. If you want to get even stronger than that, it's possible because the ultimate magnetic uh, potential of these N52 magnets is about 1.4 tesla. But in order to get an even stronger field, what we have to do is we have to further try to isolate the field that is pulling away and going to the other pole. And the way we can do that is by using a ferromagnetic material or steel to guide those field lines and sort of hide them from the field that we're interested inside of the gap. The other advantage of using that is that these very powerful magnets are potentially very dangerous. Uh, even at a distance of maybe 15 centimeters, it pulls tools, bolts, nuts toward the surface and it makes it kind of dangerous to keep one of these around. Now the trick to doing that is to add a guiding yoke magnetic material that can guide and hide those field lines. There's a property however called saturation and steel can only contain so much field strength or essentially contain so many field lines. And in these most powerful of all magnets, the N52s, that amount of uh, guiding capability or that saturation point is similar to the strength of the magnet. So if I have a two inch by three inch magnet, five centimeters by 7.5 centimeter magnet, essentially six square inches. I need roughly six square inches of cross section in my steel in order to guide the, the field around in the yoke. 
Now, if you saw the other video, and certainly I've been challenged with this, is when you take quarter ton magnets and you wanna take six inch blocks of steel and approximate them, it's a pretty sketchy operation. So it occurred to me it'd be kind of a neat thing if we could add that metal slowly or more gradually. And I came up with what I think is kind of an interesting approach. To do that, I need to add some additional components to this magnet to make this a little bit easier to do. So let me do that right now. Now the principle here is what I've essentially created is a spool, uh, sort of like a wire spool. And the idea is that I'm going to add, rather than four enormous blocks of steel, I'm going to slowly wrap steel wire around the magnet, adding the magnetic yoke as we go. It doesn't matter that this isn't a solid piece of material. I simply need cross-sectional area. Now I came up with using a 20 gauge wire simply because I wanted something thin enough that I can wrap it effectively so it's not so thick that it won't conform to the spool, but also not so thin that I'm gonna be turning this thing for days. Nevertheless, I'm still going to have to put about 1,200 wraps of this steel around here, and that would take a long time. So I built another assembly in order to make this a little bit more convenient. few pointers. Stainless steel rod, stainless steel nuts, aluminum washers, everything around the magnet assembly is non-magnetic. The metal is kept at a distance so that nothing gets pulled down toward this very dangerous magnet. I could have done this in the lathe, but the problem is there are metal chips there that might be attracted and that'd be kind of nasty. Plus this powerful magnet next to a big piece, a hunking piece of steel is kind of a little sketchy. So very simple assembly. You can put it together and take it apart when you want to. And now, in order to wrap this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on a couple of gloves. I'm gonna have my son stand behind me in order to hold the spool of wire, and we're gonna to start to feed this around. Now remember the field when we started was at about three quarters of a Tesla inside this gap, and we're gonna see if the addition of a steel guideline for the uh, field lines is gonna have an improvement, improving effect on the strength of the field inside there. So now we're gonna start the wrap. I didn't tighten them enough. I probably should tighten them a little bit. <laughs> ah! It's tough. Ah. <laughs> All right, hopefully that'll help. All right, back to work. Thank you. 
much easier to use the tools now. Let's see what happens here. So we gained about 35%, maybe a little more, 40% in the field strength here by placing the yoke around here. Still not to one Tesla, I'd like to see that, but nevertheless it obviously makes it stronger. And secondly, which is probably just about as significant, is it doesn't pull very hard. The tools are not attracted to this nearly as strongly and therefore this is a lot safer to keep around a shop. So not a bad way to do this, very convenient method of creating a yoke. You could use even more wire and eventually that field on the outside would completely disappear and we'd probably get up to about 1, 1 1.05 Tesla. But this is safe, convenient, easy and I'm going to be doing this from now on. So I hope this was useful, interesting, and uh, I want to thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe because it always helps out the channel. And you have a wonderful evening. Good night.